Hello and welcome back. Today we are at the Tokyo Dome. The Tokyo Dome is right there. That is where they play baseball here in Tokyo. And right here, there is a nature aquarium exhibition going on held by ADA, Aqua Design Amano. Probably the, one of the nicest aquascaping brands. And today we're going to be taking a tour of this place with Mr. Stephen Chong. Hey everyone. This is Steven Chong. Many of you might know him. He's ranked number two in the IAPLC, right? That's 2020 the last year. I'll put an image up of his tank right there and his tank this year as well. 30, 37, yeah. 37, yeah. And he's an amazing aquascaper. We're gonna get some. Somewhat. Some, Great to uh, finally meet you in person, Neil. Like, <laughs> let's have a good tour of the gallery. Yes, we're gonna take a look at the gallery together. We're going to get some of Steven's thoughts as well as my thoughts, my opinions on how the tanks are and I'm pretty excited to get this thing started. So let's go and head on inside. Alright, so here we go. This is the entrance. Are you ready? Oh yeah, let's get going. So these are the 88 creators, the present day 88 creators. And we're gonna see some of their works. So let's walk inside. So take a look at this. This is, what, a poster? Yeah, these full-size posters are pretty awesome, huh? Yeah. Wait, this is full-size? So this is the size yeah, yeah, yeah. of Amano-san's tank? Pretty sure. They had a similar one the last time they did Amo Gallery here in Tokyo. Okay. But yeah, this is just, just like being in front of his home tank. And you've seen his home tank before, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This Several is, times. This is one of my favorite tanks ever. It looks amazing. Yeah, I gotta say the Alta version, my opinion, was the best. I remember season. when um, I saw a video, Amano-san feeding his fish mm. from that corner. Tapping on the glass or something and the fish just swimming up. Kind of like, this is probably that image. You can see the fish going in that direction. So, Altums, they're one of my dream fish. I really, really want to keep these fish, but you need a huge tank for them. This is probably the size that the fish were in real life too, so yeah. it's like what? <laughs> nice fish. Huh? And they can get much bigger. Right. Super tall fish. Alright, let's wow, go. Wow, classic, huh? Yeah. If you have some of Amano-san's books, you'll see some of these images. Are these also real life size? Uh, I don't think so. Because no? that uh, tank in the corner there was a oh, huge tank. Oh, that's a huge tank. That's like a thousand eight hundred seventy meters in front Let's go and take a closer look. These are all from, yeah, the Nature Aquarium World Books. Yeah. Super nice. I love this style. This. This style, I'm not sure. It's it's very colorful. It's kind of very much like Dutch style. Mm, yeah. Kind of. I mean, at this stage, it was still very nature aquarium was still very influenced by Dutch, right? Yeah. So it was the only thing that pretty much existed prior to Japanese aquascapers, including a lot of stuff starting this NA style. This one was always one of my favorites though. Really? The Rissia? Yeah, these Rissia tanks, they just have like, they, they really, you know, capture your imagination because you look at the different shapes of the Rissia, it feels yeah. like moss beds or metal or there's just so many ways your brain could interpret it. And it's so cool with all the purling going on. Yeah. Rissia is like one of the best plants to use if you want that purling. Yeah. I could, you notice how there's always like this infestation of Utricularia gibba? I could yeah. never tell if it was like, I can't get rid of a thing or uh, I'm actually going to put it in on purpose because it makes everything look more sparkly in the pictures thing. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. So that's I'll, kind of cool. It's, it's really nice to have plants mix in with each other. It makes it look more natural. Yeah, well for old folks, I mean, this was the plant that inspired me to get into the hobby in the first place. Well, partially, you know, because it just looks like flower bed or something underwater. <laughs> this is a very famous tank. Mountain stone. Yeah, I mean this Iwagumi exists even today in the ADA gallery. Yeah. There was kind of a debate 
like Dave Chow felt that there should be one oh. extra triangular stone around here. Yeah. Which I think is, it, it works, especially in like the kind of geometry and angles that we favor in say modern Brazilian style or yes. even diorama aquascapes. But Ono-san's impression was that this Iwagumi was based off of the, the feeling of flow from an actual river and that there's going to be a current from back left to front and if there really is a powerful flow coming through here there would be no little pebbles that could stand up to that flow here right and the flow comes and it crashes and it smashes the rubble to bits on the right side which is kind of the story that this whole stone layout is going for um i do think though that like the minuteness of detail around here and having like this pebble here is really important in like modern diorama style layouts even. We do want to have at least one or two of these really small stones for scale that make everything else feel huge. And having it here in the foreground is what, you know, this stone makes the continuation of the lines, the strong lines that are coming down, but it also makes all of the other stones feel gigantic by comparison. This is one I, I really want to see in person. saw this I thought it was just one large tank oh. but it turns out they're they're not right it's yeah just... looks like they're partitioned this one has a log that's like an Iwagumi father stone Ooh, angelfish angelfish and rubby nose tetras this looks kind of like a Leopoldi but I'm not sure could be a Leopold eye angelfish. You can tell this is definitely meant to be the African chapter yeah. of this series. Yeah, all the use of the uh, Bulbitis yeah. as well as the Nubius. Uh, do people know butterfly cichlid? African butterfly cichlid, very, very good for eating snails. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a uh, butterfly cichlid? Yeah. So if you've got snail problems, you can try to look for that fish right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Japan, very popular to either use African butterfly cichlid or baddest baddest as your snail killer. Oh, I didn't know baddest eats the snails. Yeah, well, not yeah, you know, not the tiny denarios, but the, their bigger cousins oh, do. Oh, okay. This must be tiger lotus. This almost looks like a banana tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It's That's not it. right, but I don't think it is. But it's really cool. Amazing how they put such a large thing in this tank. I wonder like how much soil they're using. Or... Yeah, and I guess it's got no problem rooting in water. Oh, yeah, huh? yeah, they're putting a lot of soil. You can see the soil comes up right to the surface of the water. Also got wisteria. Yeah, wisteria. It's loving it in there. Both leaf types appearing, huh? Yeah.
also. Ryo, I really wanted to congratulate you on rank 59. First entry into the top 100, right? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome work, bro. And you know, I really like the scape. I know you told me off camera that the hard scape got a bit absorbed. Yes. Compared to what you would have wanted. And I, I agree. I agree with that. But you know, the health of the plants and the discipline of the plant groups, you've got, you know, You've, you've figured out, you've got a sense for the way Japanese people like to see plants in an aquascape, yeah. in a style. Like there's a bit of that, just enough of the wildness, like you see, we call it like nani ka ga aru, the sense that something is there, right? Yeah. Like these leaves coming out of the shadows. It's disciplined, but there's like enough integration that you feel that sense of wildness. You have this most recent pic on Instagram. I think you do want to show this much hardscape and you yes. did really nice hard ski. I assumed that you had coaching from Itakura-san and Tsukiji-san but I guess that wasn't the case. Yeah, no coaching at all. I yeah, just, that's re <laughs> that's really I, something. I didn't even ask my mom. This I'm, guy's got good senses. My mom has very good sense and I always ask her for help but for this one I didn't ask anyone. So like what I really like about this scape is that you know the there's an aggressive not you know half milk toast not like kind of weak angle to the wood like it's it's all in, you know, like this yeah. piece is coming up front and there's a sense of negative space in and around the wood. Getting into the top 100, now you have a sense of what it takes and you also can't, you have, if you have that ability to make the judgment call between this and that and you've achieved both at one point, you should be able to bring them together more next year with that experience. I will try my best. Yeah. It's going to be quite fun and I'm looking forward to what you come up with next year <laughs> secret plans <laughs> so moving on what do we have here is this a foggy terrarium terrarium but in japanese they call it paludarium <laughs> right really uh, in in i think like i've heard terrarium before but but when they say terrarium it's with water inside oh really okay yeah so it's the opposite way around huh yeah Unfortunate. Look, look at that. Look at, is that light? Yeah, looks like there's a spotlight. Yeah, there's that's a yellow awesome. spotlight here that's gonna, it's set up to hit the mist right there. Like sunlight coming through. Very cool. Wow. That is nice. Very cool effect. I like the how aggressive the wood is. Yeah, that's a cool looking wood. The dynam is, yeah. If you take a look, at that uh, the sign. Mm -hmm. Look what it says oh, in Japanese. You're right. Nature paludarium. <laughs> English too. Nature paludarium. Oh boy. But that's that's Japan. They do it backwards. And now we come to the tanks created by the ADA creators. So this right here is the first tank. What is this? A 120 p, mm -hmm. four foot tank. Yeah, 50 50. New oh, this one right? is created by Homasan. Oh wow! And just take a look at that. I love the colors in here. What's what's that? Do you know what plant this is? Alternanthe or right? That's Rhinecki. Wow. Yeah, it's really filled out and matured. I didn't know it gets that big. If it's not, I guess it's some kind of Ludwigia. I love these diamond tetras. They're so... That is awesome. The fins are so cool. Wow, but the foreground... I've never seen Omasan use so much shadow before. And there's a great balance of it, right? Shadow, light, shadow, light, shadow, light, shadow. And you look closely, even in the places where there's shadow, he's yeah. made sure to make lots of details yeah. so that the shadow space is also alive. And the amount, like the wabi-sabi feeling, the back and like this is clearly glossa stigma in front and clearly hair grass around it. Yeah. But the integration between the plants and then the way that the job, I mean, the Christmas moss on top of the wood also flows into it, it's all like, the way this is set up together, right? Like glosso, hair grass, moss. Even tenilis. Yeah, and then ten, like, nani kagara, right? 
something is there. Something uh, is there. That type of wabi sabi integration, this tank is really strong at. naturally congregating to the same open space where our eye is pulled into. It's, this is done really well. That driftwood I think looks really cool. Yeah, definitely. This here is the second tank. This one was created by Inoue-san. Inoue-san, yeah. I really like his works. He has good taste. Anubius hostifolia, I think, is the name of this really big one up oh, here. Oh yeah! Wow, that's Anubius. Yeah. At first, I thought from a distance, I thought it was Echinodorus of some type. No, this is wow, a type of is... large Anubius. It's really cool. That is awesome. We have Anubius growing immersed. It looks super nice. Icordia. <laughs> We don't see this very often in the hobby anymore. At least not in modern aquascaping. Oh yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, it's like a really big heteranthra zosterfolia, but very cool. And these are one of my favorite fish. They're really popping in this layout. The prey fox rainbows, yeah, those colors. Incredible. You've got Laginandra, Meeboldi Green. It's like a centerpiece plant almost. And this like Ludwigia Spirocop Spiro <laughs> Spirocarpa is like taking the role of small stones in this aquascape. Instead of like That's little so pebbles, cool. we're using kind of plants to do a similar job here. Yeah, what is that? I don't even know. Is that the Kinoria Azuria? Maybe. No, Sagittaria Graminia must be that one. Very, very big Sagittaria, huh? Is this cobra grass as yeah. the carpet? Yeah. I love the color. Liliopsis. Liliopsis brasiliensis. Anubius, that is just awesome. And this Anubius doesn't have submerged leaves, is that right? It will have. Um, like you will see the same triangular shaped leaves grown underwater, but you can see them here, right? But they eventually come up top. All right, and this tank right here, the third tank, yeah. is one created by someone that many people might be familiar with. Daichi Araki-san. Right, he appeared on Green Aqua. Yes, and I loved his video with Green Aqua, super nice. And this, check out this work. This is a six foot tank, 180 centimeters, and just using mainly Echinodorus. I think all, um, except for this tiny bit of moss up there. And um, of course we don't, think of Heteranthrum tenellum as a Echinodorus anymore, but originally it was called Echinodorus tenellus, right? Yes. So if you still thought of it as an Echinodorus, then all of it is Echinodorus, right? <laughs> and I think the only South American fish in here as well. Obviously the cardinal tetras, an angel fish. As well as autosynclus catfish. And then check out the angelfish. Those must be Peruvian. Yeah. Looks like Peruvian angelfish. Super nice. They've got red spots on them. The color of the carpet looks really interesting. It's like a reddish, brownish green. Yeah, you don't from the tenellums. Yeah, you don't see that often. Well, I think the way ADA tends to dose really minimal. Yeah. Um, uh, it tends to bring tenellum to this color. But I think not only the color, like the textures, um, the different leaf sizes, and then the way that they're integrated together in order to make kind of, it says that there's the base of tenellum, but then, you know, spots of highlights, and then the thick leaved ones here as well. Yeah. The, just within the foreground, there's so much sense of scale, small versus big, in and out. 
like if you just look at this triangle here like this one large one coming up through the smaller plants it's like there is uh, you know a rule of thirds aquascape going on in just this small space so you know the natural integration and the sense of scale created even at this level which should be only one layer in the aquascape if you're careful with your planting you can make it like two or three layers before you even get up to the main hardscape <laughs> i love how these guys are like doing the work of an anubius yeah at aquascape. first i thought this was anubius but if you take a closer look just take a look at that that is a really cool echinodorus plant doesn't get tall no looks sure. from a distance i don't know what it's called but you'll mistake cool. it for um Anubius, a classic Iwagumi. Yeah, really spikeri again. The fish we're talking about from my 2019 aquascape. The same year, 2019, Homosan made this really spikeri riverscape at the gallery. Is this that same tank? Yeah, it's the same one we were talking about oh, really? in so the they, Green Aqua they, video. They brought this straight from their headquarters. Yeah. It means they've maintained it for the last three years. Wow. And it mean, means that these guys haven't jumped out of the tank in all three years. <laughs> that is awesome. Beautiful fish. These are the fish to, if you want, like, you know, incredibly expressive fish in your river aquascape, yeah. these are the guys to go with. Such beautiful colors on that. You can see a greenish, bluish hue. Really a spikeri again. The plants Beautiful. in the background. Mm -hmm. That's vivid power, right? Yeah, yeah. And only hair grasses yeah. in this tank. Oh no! But this what tiny is that, little bit of glossal oh, in glossal. the front, you know, gives everything else scale, right? Yeah. Can you imagine if you didn't have this one tiny layer in front? It would feel the layout would feel much more flat. Yes. But just with this one little bit, it adds an extra layer of interest and makes you know the back of the hair grass world feel like it's even further back. The rocks, the rocks are just incredible. Take a look at that. Hakai stone, the king. Bit, I mean, this is the king rock. The hardest, but also the most you know dynamic and powerful stone to use in this type of flowing iwagumi. And yes, they have a really cool color and texture to them, right? Yeah. So the whole aquascape feels cold compared to if you ha if you did this in Montan, right? It would all be purple and warm and it would make the whole aquascape feel much more warm and it wouldn't match the Borrelius color as much as well. Same use stones? Yeah. Naru Uchida is the creator. This is a kind of different style of Iwagumi. Got the stones pointing up. Mm. What do you think about this? I think there was an earlier rendition of this tank with Boyas uh, that was very similar to Fukada-san's Iwagumi at Green Aqua with the two stones in the middle that oh, like yeah. created the center group. Yeah. I can't help but feel like this was the earlier rendition of the, of the escape over here. To me, this feels much more disciplined. Like you have the init low initial layer of HC and then Goyas and Risia kind of make the next layer on top of that. And I really like how the Goyas is connecting here it feels like, you know, because you have Goas here and they disappear behind the Seiryu, and then they appear here. It feels like there's a connection, like there's a universe behind the stones, right? The, um, these two massive stones in the middle create a viewpoint that draws the eye in to look through it. And then the world created on both sides has the continuity to make you feel like there's more beyond the rock. Especially, and then this... This one bit of glue out here that wraps around the stone too and brings you back into the middle. Um, this is very well composed. It feels feel. more simple as well. Mm, yeah, exactly. With Iwagumi, I mean, simplicity is the really important thing, right? That there isn't that confusion. There is, um, the stones speak for themselves. Next to the mountain Iwagumi, we've got another tank from Araki-san. This one's kind of different. Really, really like the use of Hinasafira attached to the driftwood here. Super nice. And those 
those, those fish? What are they? Some kind of barb, it looks like. Right. Uh, it says... Puntius Narayani. Okay. They have nice colors, man. Yeah. I guess if these are males, maybe, but... Super nice. Orangish. <laughs> a big sparkly ground. <laughs> Awesome. You can see that tiger lotus. It's super nice, like the center point, centerpiece plant. Clearly there, saying. right? Yes. And the wood wraps around it as well. I really like these highlights of tall hair grass too. Are they hair grass? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, or maybe. it could be aerial column for yeah, the duster. It could be. Let's see here. Uh, it's not listed, but it's yeah. You're right. It's either aerial colon or it's the hair grass. This like empty space here, the shadow. It's really important to the overall composition, right? Yeah. Keeps it from being flat. Yeah. You need this kind of nukekan. We say in Japanese, the feeling that something's been pulled out, or there's a negative space there in order to keep the whole balance. And actually, like even in the front, like the average aquascaper would probably not have this space here or under this wood this space is super important because probably the average amateur aquascaper would not have this rock underneath the wood and it would just sit on the sand so there would be no shadow here there'd be no space here it would be flat but just this tiny little bit um, because when wood falls down in nature it never falls flat yeah. onto things but as people we tend to want to Okay, first put in the foundation of the building, then lay stuff on top of it stably. But that's not the way nature arranges itself. And these pockets of empty space in the bottom, even in the foreground, are what really, you know, bring the whole work alive. Give it that sense that it's dynamic and chaotic, but, you know, has a drama to it. When I watched the video on ADA's channel, this, this tank was just amazing. You know it sounds genius, that's all we can say. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit crazy, like there's that other scape that was just flat rocks with tape plants behind it. I, I think, I really like his instincts. What I really love about you know, Isan's work is, you know, he picks themes that no one would expect and then he just goes all in on it. He doesn't hold anything back. So. Even when he made that scape with just flat rocks and plants behind it, he's so confident. Just like, yeah, they're flat rocks, deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> there might be some people who don't like that, but it looks so natural, something you'd see in nature. And Exactly, yeah. and here with the round stones, the, the key is just that you don't, you know, you don't go halfway, you don't hold back. If you go all in on what it is that your theme is, then you know, it's very easy to explain that to the viewer. And that helps to make a strong impression. Super nice. Neon tetras and there's a ton of them in here. That's that little bit of color. You can see the plants growing out of the water to launch the tree. They mixed in glossostigma with UG, right? A Trupillaria yeah. gruminifolia? Yeah. I wonder if they meant to have it in the foreground. I'd have to go back and see the YouTube video. You can see it's up here on the wood too though. UG? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think they meant to have it in here. They mixed it in because UG is a carnivorous plant. Oh. And they said, I don't know, it like kind of eats or attacks the also stigma and that's how you get a successful UG carpet. <laughs> I'm not so sure that's that's what I had in my head but because many people struggle with UG right it's, yeah. it can be a difficult plant. Yeah. So I'm not sure that's that's it is what pretty I finicky it can be hit or miss. Autumn ah. leaves in the water. Yeah. Red plants. Very Kind of a warm feeling tank compared to all the other ones. It's a theme that's been done on and off in the hobby. I think I really like the big pieces of driftwood up front 
Yeah, they look awesome. The way they shape and frame the scape is really nice. And again, like this pocket of air underneath here is super critical to the layout. I mean, there's another pocket. The sh shadowy pocket here, lighter pocket here. You know, this is not in any sense um, a weak composition or a flat composition. And the interesting thing about this is that they're using the green and white gradation back screen. Mm, yeah, I something think different. The green background choice is really interesting. I think it works very well here. Green is, you know, the contrasting color for red. It's opposite on the color wheel. So if you mix green and red, they both become duller. If you put them next to each other, they both pop much stronger. So if you choose this green colored background, it rhymes with the moss in front, but it also makes the reds feel even more red than they would otherwise. I really, really like this game. Mm. Agreed. It's just so different, but it's so un like zen, a zen feeling scape. There's a lot of clarity in thought here. Look at this wood. It comes out way, way out of the tank. <laughs> that is awesome. Here as well, and even there. Yeah, this is definitely a design you have to see in person. The sweeping wood and sweeping balustraria leaves. How about the fish selection? What do they have in here? Rainbows, right? Oh, looks like the Makolokai. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, wow, that is awesome. It's actually the first time I've seen this fish in person. They really fit nicely with this cape though, huh? Yeah, kind of, they do. Like, they're different, they make me think, but um, a bit subdued because of their colors. But then you look close and they're it's so interesting and colorful. This tank I really, really like. I like the use of this pump too. What is this, like a polygonium or something? Yeah. Yeah. Polygonium pink, is that right? Polygonium, yep, you got it. Really unique setup. First of all, I want to thank ADA for setting up this event. This was awesome. You can see so many people are enjoying all these tanks here and I hope we didn't cause too much trouble and yeah. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Super fun doing this tour here, especially with Steven. I want to thank Steven as well. Thank you so much for giving us your impressions on all these tanks. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some stuff. Be sure to watch out for the next video because we're going to be taking a look at Steven's Aquascape contest tank. It's one of a kind, super beautiful, and I've had a sneak peek at it already, so yeah. I want to... Not for yeah. IPLC. It's a brand new competition layout. It's super amazing, so look forward to that. Uh, and also subscribe to Steven's channel. I'll link it in the description below So go check that out. Give him a follow. If you're looking for aquascaping advice and you want to enter contests and stuff like that uh, He's got a good channel. He'll teach you stuff and it's really really useful and I also watch it all the time So it's been great joining you today, Ryo. Thank you so much. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next time